Macrolides are some of our oldest antimicrobials, with erythromycin being discovered in 1952. They derive their name from the large macro, 12 to 16 membered lactone ring. Colloquially, the term macrolides is often used to describe a constellation of drug families with similar properties. The macrolide type drugs are protein synthesis inhibitors, which act by binding to the 50S ribosomal subunit. These include a number of subfamilies, so our macrolides, our true macrolides, lincosamides, streptogramin Bs, ketolides, and azolides, oftentimes abbreviated as MLSBK. All of these drugs act by reversibly binding to the 50S ribosomal subunit. And because this binding is reversible, these drugs are bacteriostatic. So they don't actually kill the organisms, they just inhibit their growth. While these drugs share a common mechanism of action and they have similar spectrums of activity, there are some differences between the subfamilies, which we'll go into now. Our macrolides are true macrolides, erythromycin, and the veterinary products tylosin, tildiparosin, tilmycosin, and tilathromycin are primarily active against gram positives and anaerobes. So excellent anti-anaerobic activity, clostridium and clostridioides, gram positive cocci like staph and strep, agents of bovine respiratory disease, so truparella, and then some non gram positives, so mycoplasma, the pastorellaceae, so pastorella and actinobacillus species, bordetella, and the intestinal spirochete, brachyspira, can all be effectively treated with a macrolide. The lincosamide spectrum of activity really mirrors the macrolides. What differentiates these drugs, other than just their structure, uh, are the mechanisms of resistance and the fact that we don't always see cross-resistance between drugs like clindamycin and lincomycin with erythromycin. So there's times when you can have susceptibility to the lincosamides, but not the macrolides. And so clinically, it's important to test both drugs if you're considering um, using one of them. They can't be reliably used as indicators for resistance to the other. The ketolides, drugs like clarithromycin, have greatly enhanced activity against gram positives, but are otherwise fairly similar to the macrolides and lincosamides. So better action against clostridium and clostridioides, and greatly enhanced activity against our gram positive cocci. Clarithromycin is also frequently used, particularly in equine practice, for treating rhodococcus equine pneumonia in foals. You'll commonly see this combined with drugs like rifampin. Our azolides, azithromycin, which is commonly used in human medicine and also companion animals, and gamithromycin, which is used in uh, livestock production, um, has similar activity to the macrolides, but with coverage against some of our gram-negative rods. So even some of our enterobacteriales like E. coli and then intracellular pathogens like the rickettsia can be effectively treated. And finally, our streptogramins. Virginia mycin is probably the best example of this class, and it's primarily used in agriculture. Virginia mycin is great against anaerobes, our Clostridium clostridioides and gram positive bacteria, as well as Truparella pyogenes and Fusobacterium necrophorum, that duo that oftentimes go together. And it also has good activity against Brachyspira, that intestinal spirochete. I hope this was a useful summary of the macrolides, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. <music>